So here's an updated version of the AP Art Assessment Portfolio that I use in my classes with my AP Art students. So it really goes through the entire course and we do it in the program OneNote. The reason why I chose this program is because students can write digitally in it and erase and I can also see their writing and give them feedback on my own iPad. So students can access their own notebook, this is a notebook, by typing in their student code and then it's locked and no one else can see it and then I can see all of them on my own iPad. So it's a really easy way to kind of give them feedback individually. So right here at the top, this is the progress tracker, just really to track how they're doing, if they need help um, or need to request some help. And then right here, this is the tracker for the actual AP portfolio. So you'll notice there's the 15 slides for the sustained investigation and then five for the new selected works category. And then if students are in need of other portfolios, like entering a scholastic portfolio or collegiate portfolios, you know, those might have slightly different requirements, so we leave that as an option as well. Down here, here we have an option to do a collegiate portfolio review for students who, you know, might like one from their own teacher besides just getting them from um, the art schools. And then down here, this is really like long-term goal ideation. At the top, students create maybe like weekly goals. What are they currently working on right now? This is more for like overarching goals, long-term, um, considering their strengths and weaknesses. And then once a quarter, usually we'll go over their portfolios. So I've updated this to include the new rubrics. So I found this really helps students kind of understand the scores that they get and kind of be in charge of their own learning. They'll self-assess first and then I'll go back and kind of show them where I think they're hitting on the rubrics. I go back every year and I'll screenshot a digital calendar and kind of edit it in um, the app Procreate, just a digital drawing program. And in red, these are basically our entire quarter and our, our entire year. In red are like the major assignments, but there are no studio assignments currently on the calendar. So what I expect students to do is really track their own work and their own progress. So if students need a piece done, and then maybe right here they want piece one due, and then piece two. So this allows me to really tailor um, work to more gestural students who might need to do more pieces, or a student that is doing longer pieces um, that might take a little bit more time. And it allows them to kind of backtrack and create like little goals, like maybe the comp layout will be due here. And then I can go back in black and say, mm, I don't think that's going to be feasible. That needs to be done probably up there. So it's a really helpful, easy way of kind of communicating that to them, but also making them in charge of the pace of their learning. This is my pre-planning system. So right here at the top, I really make them kind of use the quarterly self-assessment means like basically getting the class structured, creating their goals, things like that. But really this is the investigatory um, portion of the work. So I kind of laid it out in a structured mode for students and me to kind of go through, but it is something that doesn't necessarily have to go in order because some students might need to do drawing first, some might need to do brainstorming first. I think every kid's a little different. Um, I always like them to consider if they're an architect or a gardener. Um, you know, gardeners might experiment more up front and kind of do more like quick full pieces where maybe an architect is someone who needs to plan. Um, I know it's, um, the guy who did Game of Thrones kind of talked about writing in this manner and I think it really applies to art. So students do that first. And then throughout the year, um, each quarter students do one to two sketchbook layouts. It depends on how many pieces they plan on doing. My sketchbook layouts are, are 100 points, just like everything. They're, they're as worth as much as a studio layout. And I have found that teaching sketch sketchbooks the year before in a variety of ways has been really helpful. We'll do digital sketchbook layouts. We'll do scrapbook style sketchbook layouts. And then some, you know, some students might just want to do layouts directly in their sketchbook, but I think giving them a lot of different approaches to it can make doing sketchbooks with inquiry more feasible for a wider range of students. So right here, this is not my rubric. This is really the checklist. Um, that students can use to check it because sketchbooks a lot about design if you really want to make your idea kind of come across so as students are doing a sketchbook layout which I consider as two pages you know, maybe they can check off ones that they're meeting but maybe oh I'm not missing number four so I'll have to go back and do that you know if students are missing things I can go back to so those are kind of the keys to getting the sketchbook to work right 
And this is just another tool sometimes I'll use. I made a little chart with lots of different investigational sketchbook approaches because each kid might need to do slightly different things. Um, the reason why I like this is if students don't know where to start, you know, and I know they need to do illustration, maybe they need to start with linear thumbnails. Or if students want to do collage, maybe they'll need to do digital mock-ups. I can kind of circle the one that I think they need to do, f you know, maybe first. I can also kind of denote an order. So maybe I'll do this first, and I'll do that, and then I'll do um, number three. So just giving them a little bit of order and pacing can kind of help. And then down here, this is our actual sketchbook rubric. And I'm going to show how I use rubrics in a second on my main one, but I did create a separate rubric um, that included the things that I think are really important for sketchbook layouts, conceptual and visual clarity, note-taking, technical quality and confidence, and design considerations. So it's a little different from my typical rubric. So these rubrics over here are for actual studio works. So I have a lot of rubrics here, but really the amount of pieces every student does is a little bit different. Um, so at the beginning of the year, we just, or at the beginning of the quarter, we decide how many pieces that student is going to need for their style to keep on track. So we'll number them and label them. And then as students kind of come in here, how grading in my class works is anything can be reworked because the grading system is so simple. It takes me like no time at all. Um, and I find actually students can be pushed a lot farther that way. So students, you know, throughout the piece will be asked to go back and check off where they think they're at and then underline the language. I think it really makes it more objective in their mind when they can kind of see exactly where they're at. For their final assessment, you know, if they're still there, they do it in blue. So once they're in blue, I know that they're done. And then I'll go back and say, mm, you know, maybe I think you're actually hitting here. And this is the rubric and I could add notes on why. Um, so mine is in black. The nice thing about this is it's so quick to do that we can just erase and reassess if they need to. So students have given me pretty positive feedback on that. Um, I have a couple special assignments I do every quarter, so those are over here. And then for midterm and final, I consider um, it the presentation of portfolios, so kind of getting things ready for AP, doing some website work. And I found this, I use a slightly different method, having a checklist that students can actually go back in and check off as they finish things is quite helpful. So that's what I've been using for the last two years. I've been really building up the systems. This is my third year, kind of starting anew, and I found it super helpful. Thanks for watching.